everyone. It's Lady Rose of Goddess Garage here today. And I'm kind of going to try and do my first craft along. So you can watch this video and see how I'm doing some of these tags that I'm going to show you. Or you can watch it once and then craft along the second time. Or you can craft along with this first video. Usually what I do is I watch it first and then I'll craft along because at that point I kind of know what this person's going to do, whoever I'm watching. So I'm doing these tags and I'm doing specifically tags that use up uh, some newsprint as well as book pages because it's always book pages that seem to grow, piles of them grow as you've got uh, books for your junk journals. And since I do them for custom orders and professionally, I have a lot of book guts kind of sitting around. So I thought I'd share this and kind of do a fun little craft along. So I have these little tags here um, that I, I did up and uh, I'm going to show you how they were done. Now I will admit something. This is my third time trying to do this video. For whatever reason, my video each time got interrupted. So hopefully this time, the third time, is the charm. So here's uh, one that I just printed. Um, I got this stamp at a thrift store, so I thought I'd try this out. And you can put ribbons on top. Um, there's one of a hummingbird, butterfly, hawk or eagle, um, butterfly, another hummingbird, and there we go for all the different ones. Um, so I have a lot of tags <laughs> because, like I said, I've done this a few times now. So I'm building up my stash of tags, which is never a bad thing because when you have a lot of tags, you, you, you use a lot of tags when you're doing a junk journal to stuff them or whatever. And I find I go through a lot of tags, so it's always good to have kind of a stash of them. So I thought I would start out with doing some of these tags. Now I have some already pre-cut and whatnot, but I wanted to take you through on how I do it. So I do have two templates here. I have this small one, which is for the little cards. Of course, I have a million of these, so I use this as a template. And I also use this as a template. As you can see, I was practicing some stamping on it as well. It's been marked up a lot because it's the one that I use to outline these tags that I'm going to cut out. This is actually, it, these tags came to me in a huge giant pack of them because they're actually toe tags. So it says right here, name of deceased and age and sex and, and whatnot, because I do a lot of dark, macabre kind of journals as well. Um, and so I got these toe tags, but when you order them, you're ordering as if you're a mortuary. So they send you quite a few. And I'll probably have toe tags to the end of my days. In fact, I've probably bought my own toe tag. Um, so maybe that'll help with funeral costs. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm just using a regular Sharpie marker to outline um, some of the, for the tags here. Now I really like to use the Sharpie marker because I find, as you can see here, it creates a nice natural border. So it tidies things up and it's okay if you get a little wobbly as well because it forgives a lot. The black magic marker forgives so much and just adds a nice little pop to your tags, I find. And you still can vintage them up, so this is good. So there we go, magic marker done. Now, when you're cutting these out, because you you can't just have a tag that's just a piece of paper, it's too thin. So you want to back them with something. Usually cardstock, but I use other things like, for instance, this came in a pack of paper. So I'm going to put the tags on here. The back is nice and clear so people can write on them if they want to, or you can write on them or whatever you're gonna do. So now to cut these out, you're just gonna do what I call rough cutting because it will be of huge benefit to you and you will see why in a moment. So get rid of 
some of this stuff so it's not in the way. I love this paper here because it's part of my vintage paper. So it comes out of a book that was published in the 1940s and it just has such a great patina to it here. It's just amazing. So I love using this. I also have another book that was published in the 1800s and not to worry, I've checked the value of the book. It's, it's It has no real value, otherwise I wouldn't be cutting it up, but I do try and use some of the actual vintage paper in every junk journal that I make, um, whether it's from the 1940s or the 1800s, whatever it might be, sometimes it's both. Um, so that's all the tags I've got that I'm going to cut up. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of our cardstock. So I have this and I'm going to be using some green cardstock as well. So we're going to take this and I usually have a work page down. And what you want to do is it's really handy to find shiny sheets. One, because they have a bit of a coating on them so that like if you used a book page or newspaper or whatever, you're going to find with all the glue that you use a lot of in junk journaling that it's really going to stick to the paper. It's going to get really sticky. It's going to get really hard to work on really fast. But with this shiny stuff, even like because I can feel a little bit of glue over here from past stuff that I have done, it's all dried now, so it's fine. It's just a little... It's got some texture now, but it doesn't stick in the same way, so you don't find that you're getting all sticky. But we're going to work on this paper because we're putting down our tags on here. So we're just going to use a regular old glue stick for this. Nothing fancy is really needed. Roll it up. And here is why you want a rough cut. Because you actually, if you were to fine cut it up to this line here, you would have to bring the glue right up to this line. And even when you brought the glue, you so you'd get a little glue on your paper so the paper gets sticky. So this way you can just fill it all in because I actually glue right up over the line. So it's a little bit over. And the reason I do this is not just because of the mess because this is messy anyways. And I'm good at that. I'm good at being messy. It's a skill. <laughs> that's been well honed over the years <laughs> but what you're going to do is you're going to so let's say we put this one down here right and we get our good old bone folder out make sure the glue is all you know spread out and everything but you'll find no matter how much you glue the edges want to lift with the glue stick so What's good about this is over gluing sort of thing is when you go to cut this out, when you fine cut it, it's almost as if it's in the center because I could cut a circle out of this and the circle would be perfect because all the glue is in there. So you kind of what you've done is put the tag in the center so that when you cut this, you don't have any um, problems of lifting because you've already over glued it and the ticket or the tag is in the center of the glue, which is where you want it. So I glue this all up. <laughs> you can overlap them a little bit because you don't care about this part. This part's just gonna get cut away anyways. There we go, we can probably fit a third one on here so I'll get and I love like this vintage paper it just feels so much thicker it has a bit of a texture to it I know it was in a library because I've got the page that um, the library stamp is in um, so that was kind of cool to find that in the book I got this book in a vintage well not a vintage a thrift store and it was a bit of it must have been like you know, a book that was regularly assigned because there were lots of little notes and side notes and stuff like that in it. But also too, right here, obviously some kid got bored and he poked pinholes through it. I'm not sure if you can see it there, but what I find is it sort of adds to the character of the tag and and the the paper as well so it's kind of cool that way 
All right, so we'll put this guy down here. Get some of this glue from the sides. I, I glue like I wrap presents and my kids always complained about how I wrapped presents at Christmas time because I over tape. I make sure you can't get into your presents very well. So I do tend to, you know, do a lot of gluing. I make sure that sucker is down. <laughs> but that's okay. Not to worry. Makes for a better tag, a longer lasting tag. So anything you get from me, you, I can guarantee you it is well glued. I'll put that away there. Put my bone folder over here and get out my paper scissors so I can start to cut these out. So now this is when you're going to fine cut these. And the beautiful thing about the black border is you can cut right up to it. You practically almost cut it in half and it still maintains its black border. So that's good. And if you lose some of the border, that's okay. You can always add more in and I'll show you that in a minute, should any of these need a little extra help from Mr. Magic Marker over there. So I did something that was kind of silly. <laughs> um, I bought myself some scissors, and I have my paper scissors, and I have my fabric scissors, and the fabric scissors I bought are also purple handled. <laughs> Not even thinking about it when I got them, because I do like purple, so I do tend to, if something's available in purple, I'll buy it in purple. But then I realized, oh, I'm not necessarily going to be able to tell the difference. One um, set of scissors is a little bit smaller than the other, but in a rush, I can see myself totally grabbing my paper scissors when I want fabric or fabric when I want paper. I mean, I was even cutting up some fabric the other day and I was wondering why my scissors were eating the fabric and tearing through it as opposed to cutting it. And it was because I was using my paper scissors when I should have been using my fabric ones. So I now have two scissor homes, as I call it, because my fabric scissors cannot live with my paper scissors. It just is not a good relationship. <laughs> so my, my paper scissors live with some of my other paper scissors that I have and other tools that I have. And then my fabric scissors is li are living with my fancy, you know, my scissors that do patterns and, and all that kind of stuff. So they are living separately now, peacefully, so that I know which one is my paper and which one is my fabric. So I have to keep that in mind. So that is another, yet another reason why it's good to put your tools away even as you're using them. Cause I'll probably put my scissors away back in its paper house. It's not a house of paper or anything, but that's what I call it, the paper house. And I'll probably pull them out again. And that's okay, they're right here within easy reach. I keep a lot of my tools that I use regularly within easy reach. I hope I'm still in frame. I tend to pull myself back here while I'm working and forget that, oh yeah, there's a camera up there that I need to be in frame for. I mean, not that it's all that exciting to watch me cut paper, but nevertheless, if I'm gonna be doing something, you might as well see what I'm doing, right? <laughs> There we go, almost done. And it gives you a chance to craft along with me. So yeah, so you'll need some book pages or whatever you want to use. You don't have to use book pages. You can use scrapbook paper if you want for this. You could use, uh, I don't know if the six by six would fit these big tags, but you could use six by six for some smaller tags. I like all various sizes, but these ones are nice because they're they're fairly large, so if you want to use them as journal tags, that's totally cool. And there's a, a fair amount of space on them for you to do that. And you'll want some kind of 
backing for it. You could use cereal boxes. You could use old book covers. And I'm talking about like more soft cover book covers, not the hard cover books because those are hard to cut through. But you could use, you know, cardboard comes to us in a lot of different ways. So you can get really creative. You'll find that once you start junk journaling, you suddenly are looking at paper in a much different way. It's like, oh, what what's in that packaging that I could use for junk journaling? And can I recycle any of it? And that's what's beautiful about junk journaling, too, is that there's a lot of things that get recycled because it's a recycling process in a lot of ways, a creative recycling process. Cause like, I'm not gonna throw any of this out. I can actually use that for other things. So I'm just gonna set it aside. Now you do have to be careful that you don't um, start hoarding too much paper. Cause sometimes I look at my scraps bucket. I have a scraps bucket underneath this desk. And when I don't know what to do with a piece of paper or something, I'll just throw it there. And then I go through it every once in a while. And I'll make like some tags or I'll make, you know, bookmarks or I'll do, um, you know, some kind of mini envelopes and that sort of thing. I've got a video up there about my mini envelopes that are great for using up scraps. Um, but then as you're going through, sometimes your, your junk pot down there, you're like, why am I keeping this? Because it's like, ah, this is a bit ridiculous sometimes. <laughs> So now's the time for the fun part of putting the pictures on and figuring out what you want to do as far as each one goes. So I've got these butterflies here that I thought I'd put on. And I've got this little tag here. Let's try and decide if I want book or newsprint. So there we are. And maybe we'll use some of these words. I've got laugh laugh and then we'll dance and then we'll bloom that will be nice yeah there you go this is out of one of the bird books that I have and they have a lot of black and white um, illustrated uh, pictures in there so this is actually a nest of baby eagles um, from that book so I've got that there and I've got these little birds on a wire here Thought I'd put them there. What else? Oh, yeah, I want to do this too. I got these hot air balloons. Super, super cool. Yeah, let's put that on there. Or do I want it on this one? Mm, maybe that one. So I'll put that there. And then, as you could see on a lot of these other ones, you know, I got have numbers and days of the week. So keep your old calendars, because your calendars can really be kind of cool, not just for the numbers. I mean, that's what I was looking at first. So there, here's a page out of one of my old calendars from 2019. And what I've done is I've cut out this strip right here. So you have all the days of the week. And then down here, you also, because it's December, so it's looking back to November, looking forward to January. So I've cut these out in some of the pages you could even cut out the holidays you know that'd be kind of neat right it, depending on what you've got on your tag and then of course you have the numbers right so there you go there's a lot you can get out of just a calendar page and I've got some days here I don't have a lot of numbers so I'm going to cut up some more numbers um, paper scissors are over here and I, I do outline them a little bit. So what I've discovered is they're kind of naturally outlined there. And since they're itty bitty once you get them down, it's actually quite handy to have them almost pre-outlined for you. But you do want to make sure you get the lines just right. So we'll cut up here. And we'll cut here, so we still got an outline. Because what I'm outlining them with is kind of that same brown. So there's 15, um, that's just a piece of paper. We've got 30, let's see what else we can do. Let's do 21, why not? 
So like I said, it's very exciting to watch me cut things out. But hopefully you're crafting along with me and you're cutting things out too. So I, re I love junk journaling and really there's not a lot of mistakes that you can make even when you make a mistake, which is the beauty of junk journals. It's messy, I'm good at that. It, you can make mistakes and still look amazing. I'm good at making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is really a good craft for me. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I find that, you know, a lot of the mistakes are sort of accidental awesomeness, which is awesome, or like Bob Ross would say, there's no mistakes, there's just happy accidents. So we've got our butterflies here. Now, I do recommend that you sort of piece out uh, what... Do we want garden, maybe? Garden, yeah, that would look nice, eh? So plan out where you want your things to be, as opposed to, I'm just gonna wing it and hope that everything works out. Because <laughs> um, you can change things around and a lot of times things do get changed. Um, eagles, maybe that's saying Thursday to me. Is that saying Thursday? It's a long one. So I gotta find out where I want this. Cause maybe I'll put 15 up here and maybe these are a little fidgety, but that's okay. Thursday, looks better there. I like that, so that'll go down nice. Then we've got this guy. This looks like, this looks like a Sunday. A Sunday for me. And I might put this, oh goodness, come up. Sunday. Mm, come up, you. 21. 21. Mm, we'll see. See if that works. This guy could take December. I'm going to ink that up so it won't wash away like that. So if we have the balloon here. We could put Saturday there, and we might not need a number for this one because it's fairly busy with the, the headlines. This is a really neat book where I'm getting the newspaper prints out of because it's um, a news book. It's called um, Front Page. So here it is. This is the front page. And it's the front page of all kinds of different newspapers around the U.S. in from starting from 1800s, like the late 1800s, right up until I think 1985 is when it sort of ends. So it's all kinds of major events of the 20th century. Now I've torn a lot out of here, and you'll see that it's, it's really interesting because some of them you can't read, but you'll see right here, like on this page, it says 1912, and it gives you a little bit of a blurb of what was going on in that time period so you can coincide it with what's going on on the front page, which is really kind of cool, um, kind of a neat little flashback thing going on there. So yeah, I think Saturday alone, just that. So we'll, we'll do this guy because it will be easy. They're just stickers. And I'm so excited to use the hot air balloon ones. I have been kind of hoarding them as you do your supplies sometimes. Now this little line broke. Oh no, that doesn't bode well for our hot air balloon passengers. One of the lines snapped. But we just slide that right back in there. There we go. Good. And no one's the wiser. Um, this was Saturday. Where's my Saturday? There's Saturday. Okay, so I've got that on there. I'm going to ink these up first. So normally I do use my vintage photo and I'm going to use that for the cards and tags themselves, but I'm going to go a little bit darker with Memento. And it's a wee little one. I got this on Amazon. And with this one, the nice thing about this, now there are times when you're going to need a smaller thing but with this you just ink it up like this using the actual inker itself and it creates a nice little 
border. It's super, super juicy, I guess. <laughs> so that's something you just got to watch out for. Don't get too enthusiastic. And there we go. And I'm going to do the little words. It's always good to have some tweezers nearby. I do have mine over there in the container, should I need them. Because sometimes these little words and numbers can get a little fidgety. And you've got to be careful because this ink, you can start to smudge it around if you're not careful in the way you're holding these words. Now it's just, it's a very fine line that I'm doing. You might not even be able to see it. But when you do it, it makes a difference in the way the word pops for you on the tag so it doesn't get washed out. Now I'm just dropping these on there, trying to touch them as little as possible once I have the ink on there. So I'm giving them some time to dry I have shed a hair, a hair, and it's been with me for a while here this morning. I moved it, but now part of it is back again. Usually it's my great Pyrenees Lucy that I'm dealing with her hair, but she and I both shed hair, and I have nice lo longish hair anyways. I cut it short, at least short for me. I'm just going to straighten these out a little bit because it's a little bit crooked. There we go. So because I've got the dark lines here and that pretty much matches up the ink itself, I really only have to do these two sides, which makes life a whole lot easier because even though I have the tweezers, it is kind of a pain to ink with the tweezers because they're just not as strong as your fingers. There we go, done that. Uh, pick up Sunday here. And again, it doesn't show up super dark on the Sunday. I don't know if you can see it there or not, but it's dark enough that it does, it's kind of one of those things that you don't notice if it's not done, but you do notice if it is done and it just pops it a little bit, if that makes sense. And these guys, well, these guys had a couple more birds, but I cut them down short, so you can do that with stickers. And I'm going to see if I can ink these up a little bit. I might have to use the sponge for this guy. And I might even have to use the Q-tips for these guys. But I do want just a little bit of color around them so that they pop a little bit more and don't get too lost in the black and white of the print. We're just gonna do that, ink these guys up. Yeah, so I find this feeds my creative need. One thing art does do is it teaches you how to go with the flow, because art often, I find anyways, becomes its own living thing, whatever you might be creating. And it sort of ha develops a, an energy and path of its own. And you have to, when you're creating something, you have to respect that process and allow it to happen. And just, it teaches you how to go with the flow. You know, it's like, okay, so this isn't working out the way I envisioned it at first, but now it's working out in a much better way a lot of the times. Not always, but sometimes it's like, oh, yeah, that works for me. Like, for instance, um, where is he now? Let me see if I can find him. Where did he go? Here he is. So this tag right here, the happy little accident is this right here because I was vintaging him and inking him up, and I thought, oh, I got to do this circle. And for whatever reason, I grabbed this sponge as opposed to my vintage photo. And I did a much darker thing and it just kind of went and I was like, oh, OK. But it kind of turned out because it kind of looks cool. Like it, it looks like someone dropped 
some coffee and it kind of went heart shaped as well so again like some of these happy little accidents and the other thing this guy had a few accidents that happened to him so I was tracing around my templates for tags and the marker bled through on a couple of places so he's got a couple of marker spots on him but it works he's making it work so you know that's that's beautiful I love it when things like that kind of turn out um, I haven't done Thursday yet. Okay, I'm going to do Thursday. So for these little ones, I'm going to do this darker ink. It's, it's supposed to be like warm cocoa or something, I think it's called. But it's actually, it almost looks black. Almost, it's a very, very dark black, uh, brown. Yeah, what is it? Rich cocoa. I was close. And then just December over here. I've done 30 over there. Mm. Do you want to cut this a little bit so it's a little bit straighter? There we go. Mm -hmm. Yes, watching me ink is so much fun. Now you could do this with magic markers too, if you don't have an inker. See, I've already smudged that a little bit, but that's okay. It makes it look a little more worn. You know, like, like when they would have ink smears on paper because they were writing with quills and things like that. So this doesn't show up too, too much, but it does give it a little pop on these brown stickers that I've got. And I'm going to show you a really cool technique to use for these and these kind of stickers. Um, this one as well. A lot of these stickers um, I get on like uh, Wish and that sort of thing. Um, and it's, you know, they, they're they very stuck to themselves. <laughs> they're kind of a pain. I've watched a lot of, you know, professionals. Um, well, I guess I'm a professional too, but... I've watched a lot of people who have, or who are kind of gurus in the, the junk journaling world, and they'll sit and they'll struggle with trying to flick it. So I've got a really cool technique. I'm just looking for ah my Q-tip. So this is another thing you can use for these smaller spots. Just use a Q-tip, get it on there. Um, it's also been suggested like if you don't have an ink pad, you can use makeup. You can, but I found that you need a really good eyeshadow to make it do the same thing that the ink does. The ink is way cheaper, <laughs> and if you have good eyeshadow, you don't necessarily want to use it for this. I find sometimes the cheap eyeshadows don't really work, partly because it's cheap for a reason. Cheap eyeshadows don't have the same kind of pigment as the more expensive eyeshadows have. Um, so that's why you're not going to get that same sort of effect. Um, but you could use like, like I said, magic markers. You could try pencil crayons if you've got that. I don't know how well pencils would, or not pencils, but, um, crayons would, would work. I'm not sure if that would work or not, but hey, doesn't hurt to try, right? Doesn't hurt to try. And you might find some accidental awesomeness along the way. And I just, I love to ink these up because it just gives it a nice sort of worn feel. Um, okay, I think that's all the inking I have to do. So that part is done, at least for now. Now we're going to glue these on. So again, you're just going to use a handy dandy glue stick. I do like the small ones for some of the smaller things, but first before that, I'm going to show you how to do these stickers. So you're going to take this, and I'm going to come up here a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Forgive my dirty fingers, it's from all the ink and whatnot. So you're going to take a Zacto knife. Now a Zacto knife is nice and thin, you're going to be very careful, and you're going to put the sticker like against your skin here. So it's got something to lean against. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take the Zacto knife 
because it's nice and thin, it can find that break, right? There you go, off, done. I have sat and watched videos where people have struggled with stickers for like quite some time while they're trying to flick it off. And these ones are even more of kind of a bitch because they've got that clear plastic behind them. So they can be a real pain in the ass too. Um, and you will be swearing like that if you've had to try and get these things off. But see with the Zacto knife, right away. Off it comes. Easy peasy, boys and girls. There, done. Because these ones can be quite a pain. And yeah, you'll be using some choice words if you uh, are sitting there forever trying to flick it off. Just use a Zacto knife, your best friend when it comes to um, taking those stickers off. So, which one's, I think this is 21. This is Sunday. This is Saturday. Saturday. Oh yeah, I didn't have a number on here at all, I don't think. This must be, yeah, this is the number here. Uh, it was gonna go up here, right? Yep. Yeah. let's say yes. Okay, so now we've got stickers down. Now it's about gluing. So I'll glue this guy. Now for the little ones, sometimes I do like to use this clear tacky glue because it just, it, it allows you to slide them around a little bit better. Yeah, she's open, okay. Gotta give her some time to get down there though. And this is a really good brand. It's Eileen's, Eileen's. I can put a link for it in the, uh, the comments there, or not the comments, but the description, because this is the one that a lot of the professionals use, and it is a really good one. She's not wanting to come out, so I'm gonna get my, the best tool ever and all. You can tell from all the glue that's on it. I'm not using it for what it's meant to be used, although I do use it for that too. But it's great for getting that hole open. Let's get back to business here. Get this December onto, oh, come on you, don't be silly. Don't be silly. Normally it comes out really fast. All right, let me see what I can do here. It's all in here. Open up, open sesame. Sometimes because it's a clear glue, you can't always tell whether, oh, there it is. Okay, she's here. She has arrived. Okay, here she goes. Boop, boop, boop. Now you can use regular glue. I find that um, this glue sticks very well. And like I said, it's a little bit Ooh, I kind of like that sort of off the edge a little bit. There we go. December. Done. And as you can see, I could move it around if I needed to, right? So there. That's done. Oh, this is another sticker one. Okay, so let me get that Zacto knife out and see if this works with these stickers because I ha this is a new set of stickers that I've actually got in. So I haven't worked with these ones before. So I just have to find where the little edge is. Come on, you. It wants to go, I know it does. Because I can see a little bit coming up. Come on, you're right there. There, I think we got it. Oh, I don't think these are stickers. Well, no wonder I can't get it up. <laughs> so I'm just gonna glue this down then. Easy peasy. Come on, why have you stopped? You were only stopped for a second. You do actually want to clear the glue off your awl as well. I just haven't from yesterday, so there's a fair amount of glue on my awl right now, which isn't working too well. So I'll have to make a point of cleaning that off. And like I said, I do tend to 
over glue things. <laughs> that's, that's what I do, over tape and over glue. And that's okay, this tear here, it's not really torn. It's just the in between the sheets, so to speak, were lifted a little because I was opening a sticker that wasn't a sticker. <laughs> it adds to the, the wornness of it all. There's, okay, laugh. First we laugh, then we dance. And we're going to dance. Dance. That's gonna go here. Dance. And what's cool about this glue, like unlike the glue stick, I would recommend for words to be used with this glue because even once I put bloom down, whoa, that's a lot, hello. <laughs> Oops, don't wanna put it on upside down. You can still move them around, like this one I can move around and you can move them around and you don't have to worry about glue being on the tag because it dries clear, it's all good. Just gonna smush it around so that all the corners get glue. So nothing's lifting. And you can even do this part before you actually fix them on. Because they'll still move. Laugh, dance, bloom. There we go. Done, that one's done. Okay, we'll put this guy over here to dry. And we'll bring in the butterflies that we have over here. So I'm going to put some of this glue on it. The clear tacky glue. And like I said, I'll put it the link for it in the description. I appreciate whenever you guys buy through the by clicking through the link. And you don't actually have to buy the product that I have the link for. I mean, that's great too, but if you just click through the link and buy anything. You could buy a can of nuts from Amazon, but as long as you've done it, then it counts as an affiliate um, percentage for me. So it helps to keep these videos going for you, and it helps me out as well. And uh, yeah, if you're gonna shop on Amazon, you might as well help a little person at the same time. <laughs> so we're gonna do garden next, cause that's the word I have for this one. Yes, cause I am signed up as an affiliate of Amazon, probably cause I do recommend all kinds of tarot decks, oracle decks, books, and now junk journal supplies. So there you go. Like I said, if you're gonna shop there anyways, you might as well help out a small business if you can, because I am certainly not the size of Amazon. <laughs> and it's okay, I know it looks like, oh my God, there's glue everywhere. Fine, no worries, nothing to worry about. Like I said, art teaches you just to go with the flow, knowing this will all dry clear, it'll all work out, everybody's gonna be happy. When they see the finished product, people are gonna be like, oh, it's so wonderful, it's so awesome. They don't have to know the flaws. And I know like uh, my daughter's an artist and the thing, it does do it with junk journals too, I find, because a lot of artists, We'll talk about how a painting, like if they're, you know, an illustrator or a painter or something, they'll say a painting or a piece of work is never ever completed because you're always wanting to, you know, sort of, I wanna go over this one little spot or I wanna touch up this or I wanna change this a little bit. So it's always best to buy the art away from the artist so they will stop screwing with it. <laughs> um, but I find the same is with junk journals. Like when I tell a customer and a client that I'm done their junk journal, 
it's funny because if they take a long time to pick it up, I tend to still keep working on it because I'm like, I'll find things. Oh, this would be perfect for that journal. It's still here. Okay, I'm going to find a place to put this thing or I'm going to find a place to tuck this thing. <laughs> and by the time you get the junk journal from me, it's ridiculously stuffed or it's like there's so much work in it. And, you know, even just when I tell a customer that I'm done their junk journal, I've probably been fiddling with it for three days straight, going, I don't know if it's done. I don't know if there's enough. There's so much more I could do. <laughs> so it, that's the hard part of junk journaling, is knowing when to stop with the journal, <laughs> knowing when it's complete. And it's never really complete because it's still a piece of work, a piece of art that the person that you're giving it to will continue with that Saturday that's over there with the hot air balloon so we're gonna push this aside bring these birds up here hmm Sunday kind of ended up there but I think I still think I want Sunday down here Sunday and where do I want the number I want it up here yeah maybe I do actually yeah or do I want it are you guys talking to me right now because I know when I, when I watch other people doing stuff like this, I'm like, no, no, don't put it there. Oh, no, that's out of balance. No, it'd be so much better if it was here. <laughs> so <laughs> let me know if you're talking to me. It's okay. I'm doing it my way. You take this idea. You run with it. You do it your way. And if you want any of these tags, because some of them will probably end up in my Etsy store, um, because I do sell junk journal supplies and ready to go kind of stuff because sometimes people like certain parts of the junk journal but they don't like creating the other parts like some people love to put the book together and that's their thing right they love that but they don't like making all these fiddly little ephemera kind of things or tags or journal cards so a lot of people are looking for tags and journal cards that are already sort of done up for them so yeah I've just started selling um, some junk journal stuff. I'm slowly getting it up on my Etsy store and If you want any of it feel free to wander over there. It's goddess garage um, Canada is what you're looking for goddess garage Canada, and I don't think I inked up this Saturday. It's looking like there's no border on it at all So we're gonna Take a risk here, people, because I'm going to be laying this down wet. But that's okay. It's a Saturday. <laughs> Saturdays are easy going. So this Saturday is going to work for me. And this is where I end up with ink on my fingers. <laughs> there we go. Saturday. The Saturday edition. I believe this was a New York Times. There we go. Saturday. That's a good thing to do on a Saturday. Hot air ballooning. A friend of mine who lives in Australia just went for a hot air balloon ride not too long ago. Hmm. No, that's too much. <laughs> I was just looking, just looking. Again, you got to know when you're done, right? So, now we've glued all these on. They're all good to go. Now we've got a couple more things we gotta do. So I didn't end up needing any of these glue sticks. I used all wet glue this time for those, which is great. And like I said, over in my Etsy store, I've got tools, um, some tools, as well as um, I'm slowly putting up some of this ephemera tags, cards, that sort of thing. So now what we want to do with this is we want to punch some holes. So what you want to do when you're doing assembly line like this is you want to do the ones you did first because that gives more time to those that are drying. Now I did this sticker first so because the hole's not going to really affect that wet Saturday down there. There we go. There's the hole for that one. And then I believe I did this one next. Not that this is going to be a big um, 
disturber of anything that's been glued down, but the next step might be. So we have to be mindful of that. Hopefully I'm still in frame. I tend to want to work over here because <laughs> I'm used to that. <laughs> there we go. Some lovely little holes for your tags. This is something you got to get in the habit of doing too because I know when I first made my tags I was always putting them in the journals and realizing I didn't have holes. This is also a great time for when your Q-tip can come back out because we can ink up these Q-tip or these holes because this is very hard to do. Um, like I said, you'll end up, if you're just using a sponge, like whether it's this kind of sponge or this kind of sponge, a makeup sponge, you'll end up with that <laughs> or a version of that, like this one. This is a little darker than it should be kind of thing. Um, it's because sometimes I become a lazy um, crafter. I like things nice and easy. You'll notice that I'm not a precision crafter. There are some people out there, even in the junk journal world, that are like measuring things just so and I'm like, nah, just wing it. Just wing it and see what happens. Uh, go with it. Just go with it. Don't worry too much about the precision of measuring things up. And if the papers come out uneven, just cut the uneven part off. It's easy. So my cotton's starting to wear a little, but that's okay. Still getting the same effect, which is good. So for this one, I am using the vintage photo, like I said in some earlier videos. This is like the go-to kind of thing to distress any tags, car, uh, journal cards, um, pictures, papers, you know, if you haven't already coffee or tea stained your papers. And there's a lot of people that uh, will buy papers like that too, because I see a lot of these YouTubers that are selling coffee stained papers because there is a bit of an art to it and it, it is a kind of a pain to do so sometimes it's just worth it just to yeah get someone else to do that and like I said I mean there, there's lots of room for different kinds of things like these tags like maybe someone loves to coffee stain stuff but they hate making the tags so there's a customer out there for everything so I'm just putting up some of my stuff and I do have a thing. I'm gonna be doing more of a, a listing for Happy Mail as well. And that will be sort of a, a mixed bag of all kinds of die cut, tags, journal cards, stickers, you know. And it's, I love Happy Mail. One, because you get stuff that you may not have in your collection or if you do have some, it helps build your collection, especially when you're a new junk journaler because it takes a while to build up a collection of stuff. Um, because if you're getting into it to make one journal, that one journal is gonna be quite expensive. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's great to get Happy Mail and you often will get Happy Mail like in your Happy Mail thing. There'll be stuff that you didn't know even was around or you hadn't thought of or whatever like I just got a huge box of happy mail from a very generous generous client and she sent it to me even the box was you know decked out and everything and uh, and it was full of all kinds of great little stuff I've already used um, some of it in some of my custom junk journals that I'm doing up for people. So what I'm doing now is I'm aging it, as you can probably see. So it just adds a little, like a patina of some kind, a little bit to the cards and gives it some character. Like it's been through some stuff and it survived. Oh yeah, I meant to see if I've got a card that, like the this black outline on this one turned out beautiful. It's like, oh, so nice. Um, is there any card that needs a little touch up? Well, maybe this one a little bit. Oh, this one, maybe this one. Yeah, is that one? Not really, not too much. Okay, so 
If you've got areas like this side is quite thin, so what you want to do is just kind of go down the edge with this side of your marker. And you kind of want to do very light strokes. I compare it to, I used to be a makeup artist, so I compare it to when you're putting eyebrows, you know, lining eyebrows or something. Because you don't want to be like on the eyebrow, nor do you want to do like this on the border because it's easier to add more than it is to have to take it away. So it's often a good thing to kind of use the side. Even if you're using the tip, use the side of the tip as opposed to being right on it because if you're writing on it like this, it's way too easy to kind of get bumped or shake or something and then you've got a nice black line right down your tag. The other thing that you learn as a makeup artist is you learn to to anchor your, your hand. So what I do is I put my middle finger sort of right here like this and what that does is it provides stability for this hand that has the marker in it so that it can do its job without so much shaking. Because if you're just like this, you tend to shake even if you're not a shaker, <laughs> or you tend to be a little less stable anyways. So you can just fill in, like see we've got some white here, so we want it to feel like it's the true border. So we're gonna fill that in there, nice and easy, nice and gentle. No rush, no rush. Got all the time in the world. Go slow. This is not something you do fast. Not something you're like rah, 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 with. Take your time. Be mindful. Fill in the gaps wherever they need to be filled in. And really, I almost mostly went down the side as opposed to on top. And just filling in the sides really gives it a thicker kind of more filled in now I can see the the border kind of thing so that's what you do if you goof up and you haven't got all the the gaps filled or you cut too close and you've kind of eliminated the uh, the line like that one I got fairly close so I can just fill that in a little bit more that's all I got to do and like I said nice and easy there's no rush. Just gonna fill this in a little bit and thicken it up. There, nice and thick, or thicker anyways. <laughs> but the thing is, once you get this close to the tag, you start seeing all the other little things <laughs> that need to be done. <laughs> it's like, okay, but again, it's all good. Take your time. You know, I'm a lazy crafter, but I'm, I'm a perfectionist at the same time. It's really quite a storm going on inside me. <laughs> so, I would not be able to sleep tonight if I knew that that white line was showing. <laughs> These are the things I worry about. <laughs> so there, beautiful, perfect, just the way I like it. So, and it's also given my cards some time to dry now I'll do this one next. Okay. Yes. So like I said, you know, easy to fix mistakes. There is no real mistakes. Just happy accidents. And it's a good time to go, yeah, okay, we're just going to go with the flow then. That's what we're doing. Going with the flow. Letting things happen. You can always, always just redo it, you know. Especially with book pages. There's always more book pages. So if you screw one up so bad that there's no return at all. But don't don't throw it away right away. Sometimes it's best to set it aside. Because I've done that. Where it's like, yeah, no, this is this is toast. This is done. Totally messed this up beyond beyond repair. And you know, I tear my hair and and whatnot. And then put it aside. That's what I've learned to do is put it aside, leave it for a day, come back, you know, after that day has passed and look at it. And, you know, 
it might be like, well, you know, really, I, this isn't as bad as I thought. Because sometimes when you're in the moment, you get blinded by just the mistake. That's all you're seeing is the mistake. So let yourself calm down. Come back to it 24 hours later. And like I said, you might be able to live with it. But even if you decide you don't want to live with it, and it just, yeah, it's totally screwed up. It has to be redone. That's okay. You, you Now you're making the decision from a clear mind as opposed to a mind of, oh my God, look at this mistake. <laughs> it's, it's usually not as bad as we think it is in that moment. So more often than not, I've went, oh yeah, okay, if I add this or if I do this, because there's a lot of stuff in junk journaling that will suddenly forgive things, you know, like add a butterfly. No one will know there's a mistake under it. <laughs> you know, this 30 is a little crooked. That's okay. Gives it character. Gives it character. We like the homemade, handmade look. You know, we're not, we're not factories. That's not what we're looking for. That's the whole point of junk journaling is it's not factory stuff. Did I do this? Yep, I did. Okay. Just going to add a little more here. Okay. So there we are. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six new tags. Oh, and to finish it off, if you want, you can just leave them as they are, or you can add a nice little ribbon to it. Or you could, um, you know, add a, a material tag to it. I'm just gonna tie this in a knot like this, easy peasy. Clip off the ribbon part. And you could just finish it off easy peasy like that. You know, there you've got a lovely little ribbon. Or you could do a little cloth tag like that um, if you wanted to. Just Or you can just leave it as it is. Beautiful as it is too. So whatever you want to do with it. Come up with some creative things. Share them with me if you like. Would love to see all your ideas as well. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this little craft along. I hope it helped to inspire you. Um, and please join me again. Please subscribe and, and ring the little fairy bell as I call it so that you'll know when new videos are up on my channel and you can um, see what cards I'm reading or what junk journaling I'm doing. But in the meantime, have fun, enjoy life, even with the little accidents. And thank you so much for being here. Bye.